How you doing, YouTubers? This is John in Newtown, Connecticut, and today I'd like to go ahead and show you how to build a Holzhausen, or a round wood pile. Now, a Holzhausen is nothing more than a round wood pile that the Germans use to store their firewood. It, uh, it's a much more compact way of storing it than the traditional square wood piles we use over here in the United States, and it's actually a lot easier to build the wood pile with the Holzhausen because you can put all the, the odd-sized pieces in the middle of the pile. Now another name uh, for the Holzhausen is the beehive wood pile here in the United States. Now before I show you how to build a Holzhausen, I'd like to show you how not to build a Holzhausen. This is my first attempt where I built my sides a little bit too vertically and I didn't have my wood angled to the inside of the pile enough. So once I got up to about five to six feet high, the top of the pile literally just started to blow out. And uh, I, I had to actually redo the pile and start a second effort. A traditional German Holzhausen is 10 feet around and 10 feet tall. The Holzhausen you're looking at here where I'm starting is about nine feet in diameter. And all I did to start was find some nice thick pieces of wood to use as the base and I made sure to put them on some dry ground. I have some gravel here. You could certainly put some concrete block or some um, pallets under there as well. And all I did is go in ahead and build that nice round circle and then begin stacking the wood on top. Uh, the key I've read some, in some places is to make sure that your bark is facing down on the wood as you stack it because that way the, as the moisture evaporates it will um, go up through the wood not get trapped by the bark. As you build your holes housing, the inside of the wood is going to slowly get higher and your, your pile is going to level off. And the key to building a good holes housing is to make sure your wood is always angled inside. So if it's going to fall, it'll actually fall inside or, or lean inside. That was the mistake I made with my first pile, as I started out with pretty much straight sides. By the time I was four feet off the ground, they were actually tilting outwards, and gravity just took over once I got a little bit higher. So what you'll do is you'll end up going up a few feet, and then you may have to put some wood around the outside of the pile to raise the outside again to keep that lean going towards the inside. Now once I had the outside of the pile established, I went ahead and just loosely threw wood in the middle. I have read that a traditional Holzhausen has the wood vertically stacked in the middle to create a chimney effect so that, that the air can flow through it better. I did do that on the first Holzhausen. The second one, I just went with a loose stack in the middle, and uh, I guess I'll have to let you know in another year when I try to burn this wood if it made a difference or not. In this picture, the Holzhausen is about four feet tall and notice how the sides of the Holzhausen are gently sloped inwards. The most important thing you can do is make sure as the Holzhausen gets taller that your pile slopes inwards and gets smaller. Also notice on the right side of the pile there how the wood isn't horizontal. It's actually angled inwards towards the center of the pile. Even if that wood starts to fall, it's going to fall to the inside. That is the key to having a stable Holzhausen. And there you can see again how I loosely threw the wood in the middle of the pile. Those are all the short pieces I had. Those are all the twisty pieces I had. Any of the weird shaped pieces went on the inside of the pile and I used my nice straight splits for the outside of the pile. Now we're up to about five feet tall, and notice how I've gone around the pile twice now with some nice straight splits to raise the outside so I could keep that pile slanting inwards. And also notice how the edge of the pile is gradually sloping in and getting narrower the higher it gets. Here's a view from a different angle, and you can see again how I filled the middle of the pile with the odd shaped pieces, the shorter pieces, there's some round pieces there. Also notice that the pile has that gradual taper. It's getting narrower the taller it gets. And the outer ring, all those logs, have a definite slant towards the inside of the pile. Now we're near about seven feet tall, 
and when you get near the top of the pile you want to go ahead and let the inside of the pile level out and actually start to be higher in the middle of the pile on the outside so when it rains and snows all that water is going to wash off of the pile as opposed to being trapped on the inside and here we go this is our completed holes housing notice that at the top I turned the logs over so the bark is on top that way the rain and the snow will get washed off the logs and won't go down into the middle of the pile I have read in some places that they recommend you put larger splits with the bark on them on top to create almost like a tiled shingle effect to repel that rainwater. Also notice how at the top of the pile there definitely is that nice mounded top that's going to deflect that rain and snow. Well thank you very much for watching the video today. If you have any comments or tips or tricks because you built a holes housing before, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to post below. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like button or feel free to share the video on your Facebook page or on your YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching the video today, folks, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.